1933, the Diocese of Oklahoma City, Tulsa, found itself with a great number of Catholics in both of Oklahoma's major cities. Holy Family Church was renamed Holy Family Co-Cathedral and saw the installation of the cathedral, the seat of the bishop. For the next 40 years, the bishop traveled back and forth from Oklahoma City to Tulsa on every holy day and many Sundays. In just over three decades, the little country parish had grown into a proud co-cathedral. Uh, when I was growing up in this, in this church, uh, many of the murals were still on the walls, paintings, uh, decorations, the altar rail was still there. Uh, the, of course, the, the altar was still facing uh, away from the people, so that the priest said mass with his, with his back to the people. Uh, I remember those times, and I think they were very beautiful times, and very, very um, uh, remarkable ceremonies rose from, from that era. On Good Friday, it was always very dramatic to come for the seven last words that he would have, and the spotlight would be on the crucifix, which at that time was at the front on the pillar on the side. Hundreds of students were educated by the Sisters of Divine Providence at the school prior to 1960. Holy Family School and Marquette provided the only diocesan Catholic education at the high school level. Many graduates recall fond memories of the school and church. The beauty of the church itself, the ceremony, and all the, the trappings that are an important part, I think, of growing up Catholic, that Catholic sense, and that Catholic uh, uh, cultural Catholicism that, uh, that Father Wells used to speak of quite a bit, and, and our bishop talks about every now and then amongst us Catholics, that cultural Catholicism uh, became really uh, important in my formation as a young child. As downtown Tulsa grew, times became tough for the parish. Um, it was um quite a different parish uh, at that time because um, for one thing it was very difficult uh, the money that was very very difficult there wasn't hardly money to pay the light bill so they eventually it became a Dawson school the houses that formerly surrounded the church were replaced by office buildings plans were made to sell the church grounds and build a new cathedral However, the fate of Holy Family improved greatly in 1973. The seat of the new diocese is to be in the city of Tulsa. The bishop's cathedral is to be in what was formerly called Holy Family Co-Cathedral, with all the rights this implies. Monsignor Cecil E. Finn read the papal decree making Tulsa its own diocese. The fears that Holy Family would be sold slowly disappeared. There was serious consideration at one time of tearing it down and just eliminating it, putting a downtown chapel and putting, you know, the church someplace else. Then once we became a diocese and it became the bishop's cathedral, there was a whole different feel about the place. The diocese of Oklahoma City, Tulsa, was split into two. The newly elevated archdiocese of Oklahoma City had as its bishop John R. Quinn, former bishop of the combined diocese an auxiliary of San Diego before that. Bernard Ganter, Vicar General of Galveston, Houston, became the first Bishop of Tulsa. In 1976, two persons came to Holy Family. One stayed for 24 hours, the other stayed for 22 years. Mother Teresa came to Tulsa to tell her story of her work with the poor in India. Father James Francis Halpine's arrival as the new pastor was announced at the same time. Father Halpine's service to the people of Holy Family is as complete and unselfish as was Mother Teresa's service to the people of Calcutta. In his time as pastor of the Cathedral Parish, Father Halpine oversaw the renewing of both parish structures and parish life. In the early 1980s, the original church organ, which had fallen into an unusable state, was replaced with a grand three-manual Austin organ. Father Halpine also renovated the sanctuary in the early 1990s. 
he gave new life to the women's club and witnessed the advent of several parish groups, many of which are still active. He was the only rector in Holy Family history to work under three bishops, Bishop Bernard Ganter, Bishop Eusebius Belton, and Bishop Edward Slattery. When we first came here in 56, there really was only two organizations, lay organizations. There was the men's club who did nothing but eat, and there was a women's club who really did whatever else had to be done, you know. And now, you can't hardly get an event on the calendar. It's so busy. And that's lay activities. So I really think we must be doing something right. <laughs> the parish has grown and flourished so much, and so many beautiful things have been done. It's become a beautiful place, which it was not when I came. Which Monsignor has done immense things to make it beautiful. I just wanted to preach the gospel, and I tr and I tried to have it look nice, and uh, and especially um, try to get a choir going, and uh, and then gradually it became a very popular place for for weddings, and people would come down and see it. In 1994, Edward James Slattery was ordained a bishop by Pope John Paul II and assigned to the Diocese of Tulsa. During his years as president of the Catholic Extension Society, he helped to build many churches in the rural parts of eastern Oklahoma. In 1996, Bishop Slattery made Father Halpine a Monsignor. In 1998, the Monsignor retired. Bishop Slattery assigned two priests to Holy Family to take the parish into its second hundred years and celebrate the worldwide church's third millennium. Father Gregory Gear, former associate pastor of Holy Family in 1973, and Father Matt Gerlach met the challenge with enthusiasm. They developed a great friendship. We have a very different tastes, in, in, at least in our collections of things. And, uh, Father Gear collects uh, Waterford Crystal, and I collect Beanie Babies. <laughs> See, these are things that, in history, well, you know, we'll look back and think, "Oh, wow, Beanie Babies." But um, we always say that, you know, when he moves, it takes like 40 boxes, and I could put all my Beanie Babies into one box. Father Matt was given additional duty of being the bishop's master of ceremonies at all major masses. He has been busy planning liturgies for both jubilee events and centennial events. Father Matt expects this workload at a cathedral parish. Sort of the hub of the diocese, and so when people want to know about things Catholic, such as the media, they'll call here. And, and so, it, just by its nature, it is a different kind of place. And it is sort of a, uh, the responsibilities are, are, are a little greater. The cathedral parish continues to grow to the commitment and generosity of her parishioners. We, well, we consider it a privilege. We consider the things that we are allowed to do, really, a privilege. I mean, if you stop and think, to be able to do that for especially a big, beautiful church like this and to be a part of it, you know, I mean, some of the things that we have worked with and helped with and everything are going to be here for hundreds of years. We, we just consider it a big privilege. We love doing it. In recent years, Holy Family Cathedral School has returned to the pastoral care of the priests of Holy Family and has seen dramatic improvements in the curriculum and student life. The current enrollment is approaching 180 students. The future of education in downtown Tulsa looks bright. Under the leadership of Father Gregory Gear, the parish is exploring various options of renovating the cathedral, the school, and renewing the parish as a whole. And one of the things I'm hoping that we can accomplish is a movement of Holy Family School becoming more the cathedral school. It really was very disjointed from the parish for a long time for all sorts of historical and sociological reasons. And my hope is that we can really bring Holy Family School back into the life of the parish and the influence and the spirituality of the parish into Holy Family School. 